Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Jussi Kasurinen. Some fo someone might know me as an author of the Finnish books, software uh, guidebook to software testing and or the Ruby and Ruby on Rails programming, but on today I'm here talking about our role in the Leia game industry hub and overall what we did in the game cluster. My topic today is probably somewhat unconventional. I mean, usually people come here to tell about uh, how excellent results we got, how everyone liked each, each other, but I'm here to talk about uh, a topic which I think is important for the success of our work. Because uh, I want to talk about how university does not have to be a terrible partner in your uh, startup com for your startup company or for business projects or anything. This idea comes from, well, uh, the fact that Lappeenranta city and Lappeenranta region was quite heavily hit by the economic downturn and even more so because at the same time uh, Nokia decided to change their pla development platform to something else from Symbian and other systems. So while there was an economic downturn, there was also a problem that the uh, Lappeenranta region information technology companies were really heavily involved in subcontracting Nokia work. So at this point, I was given the uh, task to come up with something. I was given a budget and we were decided that we are going to be a partner in this uh, game cluster project and uh, as a research member in the player game industry hub. So basically my mission was that you are given a budget, do something, uh, make a university research project out of it. I thought about it a minute and said, wait, uh, can I do something useful instead with the money? Okay, so uh, I'm going to bash our university uh, type of research or project involvement here a bit. Of course, if you have a company or you are representing a company which is doing excellent cooperation with some uh, larger university in southern Finland, I know that there's a very excellent, excellent Ga uh, startup hatcheries and funding options available in larger places. Uh, but uh, since you may be somewhat surprised to know that uh, La uh, Perante University of Technology isn't actually the largest university in Nordic countries. It's actually one of the regional universities and has resources which are not similar to the uh, GDP of a Central American country unlike some other places. Uh, so, uh, usually what universities do in these uh, projects? Well, of course, since we tend to want to collect information, do process uh, modeling and stuff like that, it also means that, well, universities usually do interviews, arrange workshops, have seminars, have meetings, and uh, are constantly trying to fry the time or, or working hours from the development to doing something with the university. We can support sometimes the work, but you can't really uh, do process modeling, for example, without actually having to bother the development people. Of course, uh, when we uh, do the modeling work, it's available two years from now because universities have to do the peer review process on every single paper or report that we want to publish as a scientific result because otherwise it just won't fly. And so it means that if we are having a two-year project, all the results are available after the project has ended. So basically it means that the added value to the project is just training material for the next one. Also, in general, some businesses have actually asked me, and well, I don't, I'm not surprised that, uh, well, you are obviously participating, but are you actually doing anything? And this is the point uh, my uh, research or, work or our work in this project uh, came into action. 
Like I said earlier, uh, on the many presentations, excellent presentation by Mikko Kähärä, uh, startup companies have three needs. They need money, they need financing, and they also need bills of to pay their, uh, well, money to pay their bills. Uh, well, if we go beyond the money, we uh, found out, conducted this uh, s survey on startup companies saying that they need money, they need talent, and they need contacts. Of course, on this situation, you have to understand that the startup company may not be something that actually have offices or already is doing something or has secured a funding from publishing company or something like that. I'm talking about people who are just two, three, four guys or girls or, well, anyone uh, who want to start up a game company, want to create their first product and are not probably think, not thinking about the location of their representative office in Asia, Asia, but they are more or less concerned about the fact that what, what should we do? Where, where do we get money? And what can we do? So basically the first company for the one programmer, artist, and one salesperson who start up with the dynamic trio and find the company. Of course, for these people, besides money, talent, and contacts, there's also other things li uh, like tools, asset licenses, marketing, uh, availability of test platforms, uh, these are all must-have expenses. You really can't develop anything realistically if you don't, can't afford to buy one or couple of the uh, target platform systems. If you want to develop something for Android, it's, uh, it would be kind of absurd to think that you can't afford one example of your target platforms. Also, uh, since there's uh, no much mo there's not that much money in the companies, but there's also, also the, uh, but there's always the need to be somewhat representative. So, an idea what startup needs is an office, some place where they can go to actually work, where they can arrange meetings with their potential customers or funders, uh, if they have a sauna segment or they can use something like that. It's all. Uh, a bonus, but anyway, since, well, one person said that since I'm already using my wife's money to have this really expensive hobby of developing games, my wife also expects me to go leave the house for a couple of hours per day. So, an office then. So, what it leaves, leaves us with? Uh, we need uh, money, uh, we need talent, we need contacts, we need tools, platforms, and an office. So this is what the startups need to get started. So the next part on my consideration was that, okay, so we have a list of needs. We found out on our study that, okay, these things are needed. So what do universities have then? Well, in most cases, uh, the university needs companies more than company needs universities since universities are always looking for new projects and always looking for new ways to conduct research and companies are an excellent way of uh, uh, merging the doing something practical and uh, applying for funding to find an industry, uh, industry cluster or network. So every startup company which has at least functioning uh, Y uh, registration, uh, uh, is able to participate in most types of university projects simply by existing. So that also means that universities should be really willing to get your startup company uh, with you. Also, what resources do universities have? Well, considering that we are now talking about people who have possibly no previous uh, expertise in founding a company, uh, they might need some basics on how to run business, what sort of contracts to do, what sort of the outline 
of what is expected you to understand when you are doing a publishing deal. Also, on software engineering side, uh, how do you actually uh, build a game? Uh, why do you need version control on stuff? Uh, why do we do quality assurance? How should we do quality assurance? There's people who can uh, tell or explain these things or help you sort out your company at the first stages. Also, programming knowledge. I'm not saying that the universities, at least the regional smaller universities, can be expected to hire a Unity development professional or expert by any degree, but still the basics like uh, 3D mathematics, artificial intelligence, and that sort of stuff is basically a fundamental thing if you are running a computer science or information technology program. So, of course, on these aspects, uh, you know that if you are working with the university, you can also expect that there's some courses or some knowledge that can be used with your organization. Also, something, something I'm calling here on the slides seed funding options. I'm not saying that the university is buying a stake on your startup company. Of course, I know that there's a possibility for that, but this means that uh, by, for example, using, the, using the, ga your, the game company representative from local game cluster as a, well, expert or visiting lecturers or uh, hiring their w employees as a part-time teaching staff or using them on your courses, you can more or less support their work so they can uh, afford the newest iPhones and iPads and test environments and all the other little things, assets, which sometimes are not very expensive in, well, company or organizational sense, but are well beyond the funding options or savings of uh, standard students or other people who are just trying to get something done. Also, well, uh, since I'm here today, you can kind of guess that we have some contacts. Well, I was, we were asked to join this project and of course for each startup company we helped, we provided all our contacts forward. So, what did we th do then? Well, uh, like I said earlier, we are a regional university. And the, besides all the research pro uh, project things like uh, conducting the research work and doing the publications, we also had other support functions in the local game cluster. And one of the things was that we were actually one of the funders of Level Up Lab Peranta Game Business Hatchery. So, via that arrangement, we were able to arrange tools and the office space for our startup companies in La Peranda. Also, uh, we decided that it would actually be really interesting to add voluntary courses, like intensive courses or assisted self-learning packages for our students uh, on game industry specific tools and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's nothing exceptional, really. A base introduction to Unity programming and uh, development environment, uh, JavaScript courses, so that when our students would be applying for the local game companies or doing uh, their trainerships or something like that in these companies, they would actually have an idea on what to do. Similarly, based on our survey, we knew, for example, that Scrum is something that game companies tend to use when they are talking about the managed uh, development processes. So we decided to add more Scrum on our software engineering courses, simply to give the people more ideas on how the industry is working or lower the learning curve of entering the uh, game industry. So on this, uh, idea, I draw a roadmap. This is something that's basically done on a shoestring budget. It's an addition to normal or traditional computer science program. It can also work on top of uh, any information systems program. So this is something that you can expect 
to function on any university or regional university which has something to do with computer science. So if you are trying to uh, get your local university involved in your game cluster, you can say that this actually is something you can do. So basically three courses. On the first one, we teach the fundamentals of, well, Unity this time, but it can be any framework which is considered useful so that people understand the game specific technologies and fundamental aspects of doing games. I know that the, well, the games industry and software industry aren't that far from each other, but still we know that there's certain aspects in games which are completely different from making mobile applications or other sorts of software. Like artificial intelligence, um, real-time multiplayer uh, on several different uh, uh, platforms or with, uh, between several different users, or uh, 3D mathematics and 3D graphics. These are things that are also done in mobile, uh, well, application development, but it's much, much more common in games. Okay, so if we cover the uh, basics on this here, then we put people to work together. There's a very actual excellent uh, event in Finland, the Finnish Game Jam, which is also jointly arranged with the Global Game Jam. So we can use this to make people uh, form groups, understand the different tasks, uh, do game design by prototyping, and finally offer a self-assisted course on the game development. On this course, we are all actually also applying our business school and uh, uh, faculty of industrial engineering. So not only do we expect our students to create a, uh, well, something, uh, let's say, uh, not released, released version of their game, but st and also expect them to draft up a business plan and marketing plan and sort of uh, have everything else but the paperwork done if they would be founding a company. So this sort of, and uh, this takes one year. These three courses are designed so that you can take everything within one year. So if you decided that, okay, now I want to go to the games industry, then you just go through this pipeline and the other stuff like uh, Java or C++ or memory management or software engineering stuff testing stuff, quality assurance is taught you in the basic program, which is here. So it doesn't make you game industry professional by any means, but it makes an engineer, uh, the crudely said, it makes a Nokia era engineer into something that can live in the games industry quite nicely. Okay, so a uh, couple of things I just want to mention since I've spend some time on my uh, first half of my presentation, is also that, well, uh, we are sort of a uh, human wave tactics of, univer uh, of university. I mean with this approach that we, if we find a new and interesting thing to try out as a university, we can always uh, send out people doing their bachelor's thesis or master's thesis on these topics. So, why not uh, arrange it so that these people can actually do their master's thesis and bachelor's thesis as internships in companies? It solves the startup company's problem of having no people or having no developers and having just full brute force of development work. Our university solved the problem of having places to put our master's thesis students and Finally, the thesis student has some place relevant in the industry to do their work. So everyone wins in this scenario. Also, like I said earlier, uh, if, there's, uh, if it's possible to apply the interested people uh, in games development from companies from anywhere as uh, teaching assistants or guest lecturers, we can try to help these startup companies to get money to participate, for example, in some, uh, well, trade uh, conferences. For example, games development, game developer conferences or games connections or any other places like here. I know that uh, the train ticket from Lappeenranta to here is, well, 
is not that much, but combine the uh, train ticket and hotel room for two nights, it's a, it's a cost that sometimes, as in, impossible as it sounds, is beyond what a student group or complete uh, seed startup company can afford or can afford easily. Also, uh, provide contacts so that these uh, seed companies or startup seeds get into talks with investors and funders and people, uh, for example, uh, uh, with people from Cursor as soon as possible so that they find the contacts needed to secure funding. It's not that difficult. I mean, for myself, it's uh, forwarding email and possibly uh, calling afterwards. So, our results. I said earlier that I'm not going to use this entire presentation congratulating myself on conducting this research work, but, uh, well, our idea of doing something that's actually relevant uh, somewhat paid off. So, we were working with a budget of 200,000 euros for three years. So, keep in mind that, of course, this wasn't the only money. We also had more funding from the game cluster, but this, is the, this was the focused money for our university. And on my perspective, with that sort of money, we were helping to create five new local game companies and 15 new jobs in the region which, haven't which are going to persist even after the uh, project has ended. So it may not be something that gives me the gives me or the region of Lappeenranta uh, that uh, much uh, possibility to s market ourselves as the central hub of the Northern European game uh, scene. But it's definitely better result than what could be expected from normal university involvement in research projects. And of course, this is not only the Oh, this is obviously not the only thing we were doing. I wasn't only doing this. Besides this uh, industry uh, cooperation and marketing work and teaching work, we were also conducting the normal research project. Our idea to approach this was the game industry from the viewpoint of software engineering, or more or less saying, that asking the question, what uh, do we already know from software development and what can we use from software development knowledge uh, to help support games industry. So I drafted a word cloud. This is from all our uh, project publications and reports and discussions. And as you can see, uh, there's huge wealth of different topics cover covered. Of course, the development and objectives are fine. I guess we were doing something with games, but also pointing out there's business, there's testing, there's budget work, there's quality aspects, uh, there's an industry aspects, modeling work, or artificial intelligence, programming, uh, all the different sort of things which uh, are covering the games industry from as many angles as possible so that we can actually uh, help our local companies to evolve and also uh, have a sort of a faintest idea on what to do with the, uh, well, 100,000 uh, mobile systems developers who have recently found out that they might need some other work, for example, in the games industry. So, uh, finally, I'm going to put this here. So this address here uh, has all our publications, all our results, all our, uh, any, well, basically anything worthwhile to show into, to people. It's already there, it's publicly available, go see it. We, will, we are talking there about what we should be teaching to uh, game developers in addition of what we already teach to software engineers. Also some prototypes for games, stuff like that. Really interesting version of Pickup uh, Pick 52. I made that myself, unfortunately. And that sort of stuff. So, 
My name was Jussi Kasurinen, will probably also be after this presentation, but thank you for listening and have a nice rest of the event. Thank you.